patient with a significant osteoarthritis on both knees. Uh, we just actually aspirated his left side, which shows a very large effusion. What's interesting about this case is he has a lot of synovitis that you see in the distal aspect of the superpatellar pouch, but approximately there's not as much synovitis, so that was our target for the aspiration, uh, as there was less synovitis to get in the way, and I'm pretty much seeing the same thing on this side. Now we're going to focus on the anatomy involved in this patient's condition. Here's essentially a normal knee. We're looking at it from an anterior perspective. Now we're removing the anterior musculature, and what remains is essentially the quadriceps fat pad as well as the prefemoral fat pad. And now we're removing the capsule, and essentially we're just going down to bone here. And we're again looking at the fat pads. And here we're bringing in this significant synovitis that this patient had, which is again in the prefemoral fat pad region. And now we're bringing back his capsule, which is, which is distended with a significant amount of fluid. And you can appreciate how some of that fluid goes more proximal than the synovitis. Here's the orientation of our probe and our syringe. We're trying to go proximal to the synovitis with our needle. And here we are aspirating. And here's our second round of aspiration, which was a little bit bloody. So there may have been some synovitis that the needle got caught into. And now we're injecting our cortisone. And then we're injecting our visco supplementation. So there's this kneecap on, on the right side. You can see all the synovitis. But as you go further proximal, um, clip again. As you go proximal laterally, actually. And here we are on the lateral aspect of the suprapatellar pouch, and you can see fluid in the proximal aspect of the pouch that is pretty much free of the synovitis. There's less of that synovitis, so that's going to be our target. See all that black zone, which is all that fluid which we're going to go for. If you go in your usual spot, clip, which is like right about over here, you're going to kind of hit a lot of traffic and you might not get much fluid, so we're going to go on this part of it, which is way proximal. We're talking, here's, this, here's the superior lateral patella, so we're talking about here. We're talking like a couple of inches above it. And again, here we're at the upper limits of the superpatella pouch. Here we are just pushing on the side of the knee and axial plane, and we can see all the synovitis in our typical location where we usually aspirate from and this you want to avoid but as you go proximal you can see this large black zone which relatively no synovitis quite an easy target I've not seen the needle that great but I felt it pop in and I can kind of see it so here you may actually see some tenting of the capsule as the needle is pushing against it and you want to kind of make sure you can feel that pop or at least perhaps see an air flash sign from air from the needle shaft going into the fluid before you start your aspiration. Again, here's some fluid, uh, some synovitis. This is after our first round of aspiration. And now we can see a reaccumulation of fluid, which just takes a couple of seconds for fluid to reaccumulate in the same spot where you aspirated it from. One of the advantages that ultrasound has over blind injections is that you may never know of this reaccumulation if you just aspirated blindly. You can see some blood tinge fluid. This means that we did unfortunately get the needle in some synovitis during the aspiration. However, we kept this to a minimum as a result of the ultrasound guidance. And here again is another reaccumulation of fluid. And there can be times when you can go through two, three, or even more rounds of these reaccumulations of fluids that you have to aspirate. And I believe this is our second syringe. We already aspirated about 60 cc's of fluid from this patient. Here we are just going through our injections of cortisone and visco supplementation.